The most complex mathematics in all of mathematics is what's called spherical harmonics. Calculating the bounce pattern inside a sphere is the most complicated thing to do. But you remember that, that the surface of the sphere, all of those curved surfaces point to the same single spot right in the center. So depending on where you are in that sphere, if you were to sing a note, it would issue forth from your mouth and hit the curved surface of the inside of that sphere and, and then reflect off of that surface and start bouncing off the other curved surfaces at specific angles that could be predicted by mathematics. But the prediction process is unimaginably complicated. It's it's where some of the most um, higher uh, mathematicians spend their time trying to figure what goes on inside of a sphere as, part, as far as vibration frequency reflections, spherical harmonics. There is a spherical room that has been built, the only one I know of in the world. Uh, the ancients probably had these in their esoteric temples, but uh, there's only one in the modern world that I am aware of, and that's the spherical room at the uh, Christian Science Monitor newspaper building in Boston. So the Christian Science Church is in Boston, and this is a huge domed structure church that looks like it looks just like the Vatican, and with huge buildings around it and streets that are named, and it's a whole section of Boston. It's it's hundreds of millions of dollars of real estate and buildings, and the Christian Science newspaper building is also there. And in that building, in the lobby, there is a sign. I covered this in one of my previous live streams. There's a sign that says the Maparium, this way, Maparium. And so there's this 30-foot diameter spherical room with a map of the world on the inside with all the longitude and latitude lines done in brass. And all the curved surfaces are curved glass with uh, stained glass with a map of the world lit from behind. Very, very cool with a plexiglass bridge that goes across the center so you can walk inside this sphere and expose yourself to the mind-boggling acoustics of a spherical space. It's an astounding experience that everybody should do once in their life before you die. <laughs> so it's something like that that I was trying to build to explore in great detail the spherical harmonics of a spherical, a spherical space. And if you calculate the radius of the inside of that sphere, the distance from the outer curved edge to the center point. You calculate that distance and you align that mathematically with the speed of sound, then you can find out what that sphere is tuned to, what's its fundamental resonant frequency. Uh, if the sphere was made of something like stainless steel and it was flawless, then all you'd have to do is hit it with a hammer and then you would hear what its fundamental frequency is, like pinging a wine glass. And my sphere was going to be covered with speakers. I, th I think the diameter would have equaled 270 custom-made speakers that are all pointed towards the center. And the sound wave, pressure wave of all those sound waves would meet in the center and collide. And if the tone was the radius of the circle, then the, the sound waves would all end at the very center point and all collide and put an unimaginable level of pressure at the center. And that level of pressure was my plan for a fusion reactor. I believe that they're doing fusion reacting inappropriately. They're using electromagnetics, they're using lasers, which is electromagnetic light waves, photons. And uh, that doesn't have enough power, but sound waves are by definition power. Sound waves is pure energy moving through a medium with pressure. It's a pressure wave. Therefore, if you had pressure waves of sound all pointing to the same place from a 360 degree sphere, you could build up an unimaginable level of pressure in the center of this sphere. Um, <clears throat> and if you magnified it even more by having the sphere filled with water, but not just any water, deuterium, which is heavy water, which has extra electrons, you could uh, create what I believe to be a fusion reaction in the center. Similar to the other talk that I did a couple of years ago about uh, sonoluminescence. If you have a sphere filled with water and you have two transducers pointed towards each other and you crank up the sound, you have an explosion of light in the center that is spontaneously generated by the pressure wave of the, of the two sound waves meeting each other. And 
the brightness is the brightness of 10,000 suns, and the temperature is hotter than the surface of the sun, 10,000 degrees centigrade. So that proves the point right there. If it wasn't just two stupid little speakers, but, but, but 270 speakers all around, all pointed toward the same spot, then it wouldn't be all that difficult, I don't think. The problem would be materials processing and what the sphere is made of so it doesn't blow up. However, you could solve that problem with phase cancellation, like phase canceling headphones. Every other speaker would be producing uh, the same sound, 100, rotated 180 degrees out of phase. So the pressure wave would be there, but it would be f the noise part would be phase canceled. Cranking up the power could lead to the creation of a temporal rift. In other words, you sh that would be the way that you open a uh, window into the time dimensional, sort of a time dimensional window would open up time travel. Uh, one step higher than that, you create a black hole. By the way, just as an aside, time dimensional vehicles, based on this principle of sound waves in a sphere, once you open the time dimensional window, now you can start to move it in different time dimensional directions. To an outside observer, a spherical vehicle running on sound waves going 95% of the speed of light passing by you would flatten it out so it becomes a disc. In other words, it would look like a flying saucer, but it's actually a sphere at 95% speed of light. You would be fooled into thinking it's like a flattened out sphere. It looks like a disc. And other crazy ideas like that is what I was into with the Sphere Project back in 1986.